Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. This time, can we desire the same things in heaven that we do on earth? Well, first things first, if by desire we mean want to have something not already had, the answer is just plain no. In heaven, all desires are fulfilled, and there isn't anything left to desire. A much tougher and more interesting question is whether people in heaven can like the same things they liked on earth. If, for example, I always love chocolate more than vanilla, will I still have that in heaven? Let's look at some verses in the New Testament that relate to this. But as many as received him, he gave them power to be made the sons of God, to them that believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 1, 12-13 These verses in the Gospel of John don't say that the sons of God can no longer have will of the flesh or of man, but only that the will of the flesh and of man do not make them sons of God. The will of God does that. Furthermore, even if these verses did say that the sons of God can no longer have will of the flesh or man, will could refer to the decisions that one makes in this life for versus against God, and flesh could refer to the distinction between this life and heaven. Let all bitterness and anger and indignation and clamor and blasphemy be put away from you with all malice. Ephesians 4.31 But now put you also all away anger, indignation, malice, blasphemy, filthy speech out of your mouth. Colossians 3, 8. These verses refer to anger, indignation, bitterness, and malice in company with blasphemy, which is a decision, implying that the anger, malice, bitterness, and indignation in this context also refer to decisions to be angry, indignant, bitter, and malicious, and not merely to the temporary emotions over which we have no control. However, with regard to heaven, those temporary emotions won't occur either. Anger and malice are reactions to something having gone wrong. Indignation is a reaction to a personal slight, and bitterness is a reaction to things going repeatedly wrong. Unless we're genuinely wishing harm on someone who doesn't deserve it, there's no reason to feel any of these things in heaven. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be filled. John fifteen eleven. This is the most important verse with regard to this issue, even if it only addresses it in a general way. Jesus wants us to be as joyful as it's possible for us to be, so it's worth asking, how joyful is it possible for us to be? Well, to start with, we could be filled with deep satisfaction over important truths that we know. We could experience tremendous delight and pleasure from a wide range of things that God is able to offer, which conform to what we like. However, for some real fun, we could begin to enjoy and appreciate the good things that other people enjoy. This is a little hard for some people to picture, myself included, but the truth is that we human beings don't all like the same things, and yet the very fact that we each like different things proves that liking different things is possible for us. So... If it's possible to like more things than we currently like, this also is part of the answer to the question, how joyful is it possible for us to be? It's possible for us to enjoy things we currently don't due to the limitations of our interests. However, when it comes to the things we currently do enjoy, there's no question. If any of our current joys were to vanish, our joy would no longer be full. And no, you can't reason this away by saying, well, we should have put more of our joyfulness in God in any case. Remember, having a full joy involves joy of all kinds, not just joys of worship, which some of us are unable to appreciate in this life. To take joy in God as God and not in certain things that he created, would only be a partial joy, and we've already got one of those. So it seems that in heaven what we like will perhaps be larger than it is here on earth, but only for the purposes of expanding the scope of our happiness, and we won't stop liking any of the things that we like in this life. Next, can we still love beauty in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.